Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 30th of September 2024. We have taken articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. Now before getting into the news article discussion, I have an important announcement for you. The most awaited pre-storming UPSC preliminary test series 2025 batch 2 is starting on 5th October 2024. We have provided you the registration link in the description. You can click the link in the description and register for this particular test to check your preparedness for preliminary test. So with this note, let us see the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Here in this first article, we will be seeing about an institution IAAC from the prelims perspective. Then in the second article, we will be seeing about Indus Valley civilization sites, especially we will be seeing about Lothal. Then in the third article, we will be seeing about a particular scheme named PMSY. So without any delay, we shall get into the news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about India International Arbitration Center, in short called as IAAC. Now currently IAAC is in news because the number of cases that have been filed with this institution has been declined. So government is actually planning to revive this IAAC. So this is what the news is about. So in this news article discussion let us revise about this IAAC from the prelims perspective. Before that we shall see what is meant by arbitration under litigation. See arbitration is nothing but resolving dispute by appointing a neutral third party to study the case, receive the evidence and then make a binding decision. So it is like there will be a neutral party, both the party A and party B, they will be approaching this neutral party and by arbitration, they will solve a particular dispute. So in this arbitration method, the, the parties, they will not be going to court. So the case burden with the court will decline and there is speedy redressal of any kind of dispute between any two party. So this will ensure ease of doing business as well. So what is meant by litigation then? When we go to court for solving any kind of dispute, that legal process is known as litigation. So have this basic understanding between the difference of arbitration and litigation. Now coming to IAAC, this International Arbitration Centre of India, it is a statutory body which was founded in 2019. Originally its name is New Delhi International Arbitration Centre, NDIAC. Later its name was renamed as India International Arbitration Centre. So it works under the Ministry of Law and Justice. The main aim of this particular institution is to bring institutional arbitration for out of court dispute resolution especially for commercial and international maritime disputes. See here, since the name itself indicates India International Arbitration Centre, this particular institution with, will handle both disputes within country and international disputes. Okay, So the main aim of this institution is to resolve even the international dispute without going into long proceedings which is already there in court. Now currently, our Indian government has decided to incentivize MSMEs to choose arbitration over lengthy court proceedings. So government is thinking that while engaging MSME, the court will reduce the number of cases being taken in. And when MSMEs choose arbitration center, the number of cases will also increase in this particular center. Currently, the number of cases with respect to this institution is very low, like only 15 ongoing institution arbitration is being happening in this particular institution. It is very low when compared to SIAC, which is Singapore's International Arbitration Center and London's Arbitration Center. So comparing both of them, India's arbitration center is handling very low number of cases. So here comes the question, what can be done? See, firstly, certain rules can be amended to make arbitration more accessible and cost effective for MSMEs and maritime disputes. Secondly, Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. This legal framework can be revived or rechecked to include more international disputes and we can also make provisions in a way such that it invites the international parties to participate in this arbitration process. Apart from this, government can generate awareness among the MSMEs to participate in the arbitration process. And it can even collaborate with international arbitration centers like the Singapore's and London's arbitration center 
to increase more collaboration and increase the number of cases that are being attended by this institution. So, so far we saw about the difference between arbitration and litigation. Then we saw crisply about this India International Arbitration Center. Then we saw why there is a decline in number of cases being attended by this institution. Then we saw how we can rectify this problem. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article about PM Mukt Vijli Sola Yojana, in short called as PMSY. According to this article, this particular scheme has turned RTS households as independent power producers. Here, the households which has the rooftop solar installation, in short called as RTS, is known as the RTS households. So, this particular scheme has turned the households which has installed rooftop solar panels as a independent power producers. So, this is what the article is talking about. Now, let us go through prelims fact about this particular scheme PMSY. So, this PMSY, the main aim of it is to promote solar power adoption in India. If you ask how, by subsidizing rooftop solar panel installation, for households. See, in India, as we all know, uh, the middle class population is the highest population. So, to bring in the success of any particular thing, we have to make it affordable for the middle class people. So, this is why the rooftop solar panel installation is being subsidized in order to promote the solar power adoption in India. So, we will see how this subsidy actually works. If you can see in this table, average monthly electricity consumption is given on one side in units and the suitable rooftop solar power capacity that can be installed in your rooftop is given here. So, if your household requires 150 units of electricity per month, you have to install a solar power panel with capacity of 1 to 2 kilowatts. Similarly, depending upon consumption, you have to install a larger capacity of solar power. That is what this table actually means. So, depending upon the capacity that you are going to install, the subsidy also varies. So, you can see that here, if you are installing 1 to 2 kilowatt, you will get 30,000 per kilowatt as subsidy. And if you are Installing up to 3 kilowatt, you will get 18,000 per kilowatt and the total subsidy for system larger than 3 kilowatt is capped at 78,000 rupees. So, what this means is nearly 60 percentage of installation co cost is given as subsidy in order for in order to make it easier for the household to afford it. So, this is the first important feature of this particular scheme. Secondly, there is net metering. So, if you have installed 2 kilowatt capacity of rooftop solar panel and if you generate 2 kilowatt of energy, suppose your energy consumption is only 150 units, the remaining power generated, it can be sold back to the grid for credits. So, in this method, you can reduce the energy cost that you are paying every month as well as you can sell the remaining unit to the power grid. So, this is how by making an initial investment, you can get returns every month without actually doing any intensive hard work. So, the third point is that it provides reduced or zero electricity bill due to solar energy generation and you can also sell it in the market. Thirdly, low interest loans is provided to cover the remaining cost. So, the features of the scheme itself is reducing all the shortcomings that hinders the installation of any solar panels. So, what are the impacts of this particular scheme? Firstly, it will add up to 30 gigawatt of residential solar capacity. Secondly, it will reduce 720 million tons of CO2 emissions. Now, this point is very crucial because India is currently relying on thermal power plants. So, these thermal power plants generate electricity due to burning of fossil fuels. So, when this is reduced by a renewable green source like solar energy, we can see the reduction of CO2. So, this will also help India reach its nationally determined contribution very earlier than expected. Apart from this, it also creates nearly 17 lakh jobs for manufacturing assembling of these solar panels. This includes installation and providing services as well. However, there are certain shortcomings with respect to the scheme. Firstly, the initial investment is very huge, which is very difficult for lower middle class 
population. Also, the scheme has received very fewer applications than targeted. This slows down the process of solar panel installation in households. And there are certain technical challenges due to lack of awareness. Maintaining solar panels is also a challenge in the ground level. So these are all certain shortcomings that need to be addressed. So, so far we saw about this PM SY scheme. We saw what are all the features of this particular scheme, what are all the advantages and what are all the shortcomings. So, with these learned points, now let us try to solve a preliminary question. Let me read out the question for you. Which of the following is not a feature of PM Muft Bijli Solar Yojana, in short called as PM SY? Here, four options are given. The scheme offers a 60% subsidy for solar installation up to 2 kilowatt capacity. Second statement says collateral free loans are available to finance solar panel installations under the scheme. Third option says households can install solar panel up to 5 kilowatt with full government subsidies and the fourth option says excess solar energy generation can be fed back into the grid to reduce electricity bill so here the correct answer is option c it is the wrong feature of pm muft bijli solar yojana so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article now look at this article which highlights about Indus Valley Civilization site, Lothal. The news is that researchers have identified fresh evidence for the existence of a dog in Lothal. This is what the news is about. So in this news article discussion, let us revise about Lothal, its location and some of the significant factors that you have to remember for the preliminary examination. So let's start with the discovery of this particular place Lothal. Here in this map, you can see where Lothal is present exactly. So it was discovered in 1954 by S.R. Rao. It is located 80 kilometers southwest of Ahmedabad which is in Gujarat. Talking about its significance, it is a port city of Indus Valley Civilization and it is known as world's earliest known dock connecting Harappan cities in Sindh and Saurashtra. So the literal meaning of this Lothal is the mound of dead and there are also evidences of beer making factories in Lothal. One interesting fact is that it has been nominated for UNESCO's World Heritage Site, but it is not approved till now. It was applied in 2014, but still now it is in the pending list of UNESCO World Heritage Site. This is the reason why it is not known worldwide. So with this basic information, now let us see what are all the current development that is happening in this particular place, Lothal. See, currently the Ministry of Port shipping and waterways they are constructing national maritime heritage complex in Lothal so this will be Asia's largest underwater marine museum so in this particular museum India's maritime heritage will be showcased so that it will become an international tourist destination apart from this this NMHC this national maritime heritage complex will be India's grandest naval museum and will consist of four theme parks including memorial, maritime and navy, climate, adventure and amusement. So all these are the components of this particular complex. Apart from this, Lothal is also part of Sahar Mala program. Remember these facts about Lothal. Now with this basic understanding, let us revise about the Indus Valley Civilization. So Indus Valley Civilization is the start of civilization in India, in Indian subcontinent. So remembering it is very very important it will be in preliminary examination year on year so just remember all the facts it flourished around 2500 bc in western south asia and it was announced by britisher john marshall in 1924 the history behind identifying this particular site is very interesting britishers while laying the railway line they started to unearth this buried treasure and this is how Indus Valley civilization was actually discovered and it is the largest of the four ancient urban civilization. Here in this map you can see all the sites and the river on which these IVC sites are there. All these sites are very important. There will be preliminary question asking you to arrange all the sites from the west to east or east to west. They will be asking which are all the sites inside Indian border currently. So these kinds of questions will be asked. Or apart from this, they will be asking questions with respect to the rivers as well, which site is placed in which particular river. So these kinds of questions will be asking in preliminary examination. So make note of this particular map. 
Now specifically talking about Harappa, it was excavated in 1921 and excavated by Daya Ram Sahini. Knowing the names of excavators is also very important because one year we got a preliminary question regarding this IVC site, who excavated it. So it is located in Bank of River Rabi in Montgomery district of Punjab. Currently it is in Pakistan. So the unique characteristic of Harappa is that it has baked bricks. It is a planned town and stand stone statues of human anatomy has been found from this particular site. Apart from this, there are granaries and bullock carts which actually depicts the lifestyle of the people at those timelines. When talking about Mohanjadaro, it was excavated in 1922 by R.D. Banerjee. It is in Bank of River Indus in Larkana district of Punjab. It is currently in Pakistan. So the unique characteristic of this Mohanjadaro is the great bath for which the ceremonial activities is taken place. And there is a granary to store all the food grains. There is also a bronze dancing girl that has been found. Seal of Pasupati Mahadeva is from this particular site. And the statue statue of beard man is also found from this place. And a piece of woven cotton is also found here. All these explain the culture that evolved during this particular period. And talking about Dolavera, it was excavated in 1985 by R.S. Bishit. It is located in Gujarat in Ranafkash. So remember this location, it is in India. So some of the important characteristics of Dolavera is it has water harnessing system. This is a very unique characteristic. It is a previous question as well. Apart from this, it has water reservoir and the first IVC site in India to have received the World Heritage Site status by UNESCO. So remember this fact as well. Okay, so far we saw about Lothal, some of the current development that is happening in Lothal. Then we saw what is the IVC. We saw about three important IVC sites when they were excavated and some of the unique characteristics of it. Now let us try to solve a preliminary question regarding this. This is a previous question asked in 2021. Which one of the following ancient town is well known for its elaborative system of water harvesting and management by building a series of dams and channeling water into connector reservoir? See the correct answer here is option A, Dolavira. So this is why I asked you to revise the IVC sites. It is a very important question. You can score two marks by remembering all the sites. So we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankara's Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you so much for listening.